Welcome back, and we are here with our special guest, Jordan Smith, who has become our resident therapist, just in case you didn't know that, <laughs> um, and we have Kelly back as well. So, um, Jordan, you heard us talk earlier mm -hmm. and with Rena about what grief was, mm -hmm. so maybe you can give us your definition and how you work with your patients as well. Yeah, thank you so much, and I, and I have to say that I'm really honored to hear stories like Rena's, um, and even your IBM story as well. Uh, there are so many different losses that you've talked about today, and it needs to be talked about. The person who's going through grief, I think it's just an array of mixed emotions. Um, there is, for me personally, when I work with clients, there is no model to go by. Um, you had touched on a little bit about Kubler-Ross um, and the five stages. As much as that's a foundational theory to work from, I typically like to rip it up and throw it into my basket of garbage and I say, let's just work to where you are uh, and how you're feeling. Um, I think grief is, is unlimited time of remembering somebody in different ways. You can remember them in really fun, happy ways. You can think of uh, you know, be angry that they're gone. I think there are some things that you go through different experiences. But I can't, as you can tell, I can't really define it as a definition like Webster's Dictionary. I just really can't. It's mm -hmm. an experience. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We, um, you know, it's just, you talk about anger, and so yeah. there are certain emotions attached to yes. the process. And, and I know that there are people that have gone, like we have models coming at our yin yang from, you know, people that come out of like Harvard and. Uh, Princeton mm -hmm. and Yale and all of those Algorithm things. Well, and that, you know. <laughs> I think they try to explain the human experience by putting a box around it so that yeah. people can actually then think about it in a yeah. different well, way. Well, actually, that's the quote that you just, before we came on air. Oh, yes. The, um, what is that quote? Trying to make... It's highlighted, so it's very important in my book. <laughs> right. Um, normalizing a deeply not normal time. Right. right. Absolutely. I mean, that's it's beautifully said. Yeah. Because it really is. Um, it's interesting, though, because when you think about it, there's only two certainties in life. Death mm -hmm. and taxes. Death and taxes. <laughs> oh, yes. Right? <laughs> yeah. right? Right. So it's the death of something. Yeah. Yeah. And, of course, you, you probably get taxed on the death, too. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't remember that. But, but the anger. I wanted to get back yeah. to the anger because um, I lost my dad, too, as, you know, like Rena was talking about mm -hmm. and Kelly. Um, I, d I didn't get angry with him going, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and I think you mentioned it in terms of relief. There was relief because he was, you know, he had Parkinson's, yeah. and so to see the deterioration was scary for us, mm -hmm. especially me because I was Daddy's little girl, right? Yep. But my my niece passed away just before Christmas, and I got mm -hmm. angry with her and my brother, mm -hmm. and she was 25, and it was drug related, and anger, anger. I'm still angry. I'm still angry with him. Can I ask what the anger stems from? For you, why are you angry? I didn't know we were going to have a therapy session, but Sorry. thank you. No, no. I think the anger, and Kelly and I have talked about this too, because when we did the show on addiction and watching my brother over the last, I don't know how many years, and then the recognition that my 25-year-old niece passed away of a drug overdose, yeah. mm -hmm. um, and how she was in that environment because he's an alcoholic mm -hmm. and he, uh, you know, yep. he uses the drugs that she overdosed on for chronic pain and all of that stuff. I'm angry at him for kind of allowing that environment to be around her. Yeah, the mm -hmm. modeling of the coping yeah. skill yeah. which we talked about. Yeah, so. it's probably not right, but right now that's where I am. Oh, no, this is the biggest thing, is that there is really no right or wrong way to yeah. grieve. And I think the anger, I mean, the reason I ask is I, th I think you've now touched somebody out there that feels like they're angry, but feels ashamed to talk about yeah, it. Yeah, I think people feel guilty about being angry. mad at the person oh, that's for gone, sure. you know. And so then nobody, yeah. th and that, that was, you know, when Hazel and I were thinking about the concept for the show as an entity, that thing called life. Mm. It was really so that we could have some fun shows and some fun discussions, but yep. there was also things that people need to start coming out and and feeling safer that yep. we can talk about these things. Exactly. So. And I mean, another thing too, I see clients come in and say, okay, Jordan, I'm not angry. I'm not depressed. I actually feel okay. Yeah. Mm. That's horrible. 
I should be right. feeling a certain way. The, yeah. should, the should be's, right? Oh, the, the should. 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 Stop yeah. shitting yourself. But I, you I, know, it's yeah. so funny. That what struck me, when I first met Rena, I met her as a, a salon owner. Mm-hmm. And I was looking, I was new to town, looking for a place to, to get my hair done. Right. And what struck me almost instantly with her was, because we very, the first day I went in, I was in there for, for a cut and color. So we were there for a long amount of time. And we started chatting. And, I really admired her, um, mm-hmm. not only because just as you said, I mean, she's just a fabulous woman, but I admired her um, adaptability to the grief of her father. That's a really good word. Mm-hmm. And she feels it. She misses him. Yeah. There's days that she feels, so, but it doesn't, it's not who she is. It's not mm-hmm. how her life plays out every day. And I really was struck by that because I did the opposite. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I just loved the way she framed it. And I knew immediately I was going to have her on for this particular topic because I just think the way she, she approaches it is so healthy. Mm-hmm. Not that there's a healthier and unhealthy way. Yeah. Um, not that there's a right or wrong way. But it was something that struck a chord with me mm-hmm. because I thought, wow. This girl's really, there's something special about this girl. Well, and the process, too, Kelly, that you were going through as well, and still are going through with your dad. Right? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and I, I love the word that you used, adaptability, because there is a quote about survival mm-hmm. of the fittest and the people that are actually going to survive longer than everybody else are the people who can adapt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's, you know, when you think about this process that people have to go through, and it is a process. We can't jump over no. and go back. Though Emotion some days was. you wish you can, yeah, right, right. you can't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, after a certain amount of time, you can put that grief into your everyday life. You can live with it. You reintegrate yeah. with grief. Yeah. And you reinvent yourself. Like when sure. we're talking about the loss of a relationship, yep. so like a divorce, and Hazel and I yep. are both divorced, and I'm now remarried. Um, she keeps telling people that, eh? That I'm remarried? No, or that I'm, you're, that no I'm I'm I keep telling people that you're single. There's a big difference. Sorry. And available. Um, <laughs> having said that, <laughs> uh, um, you can, it's actually kind of can be an exciting time because you can reinvent yep. yourself. And that's whether it's the loss of a job or it's the loss of a relationship or a mm-hmm. friendship. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, even for me, like I'm, I'm no longer somebody's sister. But I'm such a better friend. Mm, I love that. You know, and a better wife. I'm a better person. Yep. Uh, um, because of that loss. Because of that loss and, and yeah. the other ones that have sort of brought me to where I am yeah. today. So it's the, the other side of the hill is that there's opportunity. Exactly. So, um, which. How do you help your clients through this? I listen a lot. Mm. And I ask them for memories. Because I think there's this this fear of if I remember them one way, I, I'll do a mis- you know I won't remember them the way that they should be. Mm-hmm. But I ask a lot, like, what was your first memory with so and so? And pretty soon through the tears, there's smiles and there's laughter, and we leave on a really good note. Mm-hmm. And sometimes when it hasn't been, um, where they don't feel there's been closure, we do a lot of closure activities. You know, can you write a letter? Mm. Maybe it's even a letter to a body part. Right. saying thank you for what you've served me and now I'm letting you go. That's powerful. Yeah. Your eyes yeah. your, and the, our Absolutely. girlfriend, you know, she fed two of her children. Oh, yeah. I'm getting goosebumps. Right? I mean, I think yeah. that's that's exactly it. Yeah. Um, we do a lot of uh, uh, mindful activities outside, going for walks, maybe on an anniversary in particular, buying flowers and putting, giving that flower to somebody, going for a walk and listening to the music. I mean, there's little activities that well, can help you heal. Mm-hmm. Um, and you were talking recently about, or earlier about being triggered, that memory, that mm-hmm. muscle memory. Yes. So I think that definitely happens. Um, yeah. I think you can be triggered. Maybe you're okay for one anniversary, but the following year, it's just, it blows you out of the water. And it's a, it's a day where you need to cry or feel angry right. or joy. Right. right. I don't think there, the, the brain just... It just happened. Yeah, it was funny. I was talking to Rena and um, Hazel today while we were sort of getting ready for the show, and I said, I think sometimes with anniversaries, I I put too much pressure on myself Mm. not to acknowledge them. Oh, interesting. So, you know, one of the things that really helped me through the grief of my father was a practical way that my therapist said, don't 
acknowledge the day he passed. Mm. Acknowledge Father's Day and his birthday, but you know, it's such there's such sadness. Mm-hmm. And it resonated yes. with me and I liked it. Mm-hmm. But then, you know, <laughs> just when you think, okay, it's the anniversary. Okay, now I can't acknowledge right. it. You know, then, right. and then it just builds and builds and builds, right? Yeah. So um, yeah. it can also backfire on you a little bit. Yeah. So trying to find that balance, which, you know, seems almost impossible, um, mm. is important not to just, you know, to put too much pressure on yourself about those sorts of things. What's going to work is going to work, and it might yeah. work one day, and it's not going to work the next day. And it's being kind to yourself. And if you feel like you need to, you know, stay in the house or you need to go do whatever you need to do, allow it. Mm-hmm. Give yourself permission. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, just I'd like to get your comment on sort of time frame. Mm-hmm. You know, mm. to, yeah, you heard me say, I mean, my dad, it took me 17 years to finally let go. Whereas my mom, it was fairly quick yeah. because I was little and we really didn't deal with it. And I yeah. did deal with it later on, but it wasn't quite the event. That, you know, so I think I think a huge thing a lot of my clients hear is that, is that time heals. I don't believe that in my heart and, and, and soul. I think with time, the, the sting lessens. Yes. But does it heal? I don't know when it comes to a significant loss in our lives um, because I think that does put that time frame on. You know, why am I still crying 10 years later? Right. Because you are. Yeah. Um, now most people um, are able at around six months they are able to fully kind of reintegrate back into daily life and yeah they may have triggers but they're not overall consumed with grief and and some of those feelings that they've had like anger so six months but the thing that I have to watch out for as a mental health therapist is when somebody becomes um, gets that complicated grief where it's, it's this prolonged grief they're not getting back to work the depression's really bad um, thoughts of wanting to join the person or um, you know self harm, then that's when okay something's not right in that time frame. Level. I have to interact with that now. Yeah. Let me ask you something. Just as you were talking, how as a, a, a therapist, when you're going through your own grieving process, mm-hmm. do you help others? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think it must be very very difficult. Um, this is why I usually have five or ten minutes in between sessions. Because the secret is sometimes I have to cry or I have to sit with the feelings that the clients have left in the room Mm -hmm. um, and really sort things out. Because part of my practice is I may come with my own grief. I have got to try my hardest to leave it at the door and listen to somebody else's story and be as present as I can be. Yeah. Sometimes I take it home and I hug my kids tight and sometimes I go for a run. Like it's. It's really hard. We're going we're gonna to have to wrap it up, okay. but I think, thank you, because I think You're it's so giving welcome. us a different perspective again. Yeah. Um, great perspective. And when we come back from break, we're going to have Rena back. Um, so it's going to be like The View. Well, it's, it's going to be a party, actually. <laughs> it's so going to be nothing like The View, actually. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. That's my opinion. <laughs> Welcome back, and today we're talking about coping with grief. We have our two guests with us, so we're having a little bit of a party and kind mm-hmm. of a round table to talk about this. I want to go back to Jordan, that piece that we said just before we uh, stopped for break, mm-hmm. um, and, and maybe you can tell you a little bit more about what that what, what it was we were talking about. Which was? Do you remember? <laughs> Do you remember? Because I don't. I don't know. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, brilliant. Okay. <laughs> All right. So okay, we wanted to move on to another topic anyway. Well, let's let's move on then. So one of the <laughs> things, as we have all experienced grief or change, mm-hmm. um, what are some of the things that gets in the way of us dealing with it? So, you know, Kelly, you talked about yeah. hanging on to the pain because yeah. you felt yeah. that that made, made your father be present with you. Mm -hmm. Uh, Rena, can you think of anything? I can go to Kelly first if you want to talk about that. No, I think that sometimes can get in the way is other people. Yeah. 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 I think that's the biggest thing is I think if someone else is grieving or someone else has something going on and you need to be a support for them or, um, you know, like some people don't like to be around people that are sad. Mm -hmm. So like if I go hang out with you and you just want happy and I'm having a bad day grieving the loss of my father which happened a lot, especially sometimes, you know, with 
with what's going on and all you want to do is cry because that's all you feel they don't want to be they don't want to hang out with you anymore yeah. and then you lose friends yeah. yeah so then you have yeah. to be like okay i can't grieve when i'm around this person so i'm just going to pretend yeah. to be happy yeah. and to keep whatever friendship yeah. alive yeah. or job or whatever you're doing Love right? stress Cause I, you. I just don't think you're allowed to yeah. actually be sad well i think sometimes. you know what that um that brings another sort of interesting point along that line and is that um, I often find that um, you get fr so for the first couple weeks you're not forgot it's oh you know Kelly going for through the divorce and they finally separated and you know and then two weeks later your life their life goes back to normal That's right. you're still here mm -hmm. you're still grieving the loss mm -hmm. of something and it just seems to be forgotten about and I always say that that month later, I always reach out and say, today I thought you could use a hug, so I'll send flowers or something, just to say, I get it, and if you need a hug, here's your hug, kind of thing. It's really okay. funny, though. It talks to, to how other people deal with it, because I remember um, being laid off from Deloitte, mm -hmm. because I worked there for a couple of years, and I remember, and it was the first time ever something to me, that was very traumatic. I'd never. I had always made the decision to leave. I had, it was. It was never the company's decision to mm -hmm. to let, get me to move on. And I remember going home and actually physically being in the fetal position. Mm -hmm. And the person that I was in a relationship at the time actually dragged me out of bed because he couldn't deal with me being, being vulnerable. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I also think though that sometimes people compare. So yes. it's like if I'm going through sure. something and they're like, well, I got something way worse than you have. Right. And then yes. they go right into theirs that you're like, it's not even worth talking about. Because yeah. no one's going to listen to me anyway. True. So, I mean, like you save it for those special people that are really interested in your world. Yeah. What do you see, Jordan, in terms of some of your, your patients that you've dealt with? Things like, you know, there's the avoiding the emotions and there's the people not Definitely. being able to deal with your emotion. What other things have you, have you seen? Um, I think confusion and hurt. I think I hear a lot about you. You find out who your friends are. Mm -hmm. I've heard that a True. lot. Yeah. Um, and I think again, it's just expectations of society that that you know some people, some you know, a factory workers that I know, they get two weeks off. Yeah. That's it, and then five days. Like yeah. floored when I heard that. Like, how are you expected to go back? Some people would love that because a coping strategy is putting yourself into your work. That's true. That's true. And that's how people work for me. Yeah. And it worked for you. But I had to talk it out because every right. time the new person that came in the chair <laughs> wanted to talk about it. Yeah. You know? Yeah, right. You know what was amazing for me was that um, my dad passed in the U.S. So there was, um, you know, some time that went by trying to arrange that and then come back because we did the funeral here in Canada. Mm. And we had the funeral on the Friday, and I went back to work at IBM on the Monday. And a week wow. later, my boss came to me and said, we love you. We know you're not up to par. Because at that point, I was, I was doing phone sales, and they would listen, and oh, they yeah. could record for training purposes. Yep. And she said, you're not yourself yet. You've come back too, too quickly. We want you to know mm -hmm. that you go, and you take, if it's three months, it's three months. If it's three weeks, it's three weeks. And I did. I got in a plane and I went back to North Carolina and I was gone for about three weeks. Oh. And that was a gift. That is a gift. Because you don't, that's a, a, a rarity yep. in, in any workplace. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And I think some, the, typically speaking, when someone loses something, they usually, I usually see them go through denial at first or just playing this isn't happening to me. Mm -hmm. I see that a lot. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because it's, it's the brain almost putting them into survival mode. You know, people I've seen, for example, uh, a friend of mine actually lost their child. Um, and you go to the funeral, and she's the only one that's not crying. Right. And everybody else is. And people are like, well, what's her problem? Yeah, everybody's watching her. Well, why isn't she crying? Yeah. Well, because right now she's in survival mode. Yeah. And this is what she needs to do to get through it. it the brain really does this chemical reaction where it it's put in survival mode, right? Yeah. And that's yeah. happened. And it's interesting because I think when we talk about things that are getting in the, w sometimes get in the way of our grief is uh, we shut down. Oh, yeah. And then for me, as we talked about in the addiction show, I started drinking heavily over the, the yeah. course of a couple months yeah. because I just couldn't cope. No, like couldn't it was, deal. It was, yeah. And yeah. I think that gets in the way. I mean, because that totally. just messes with yeah. all your chemicals. And See, and I also think that grief is such a life-changing event. Like, I think with this certain situation, I've gone through it, and I feel more humble 
mm, than I probably right. have ever been in my whole life going through this experience because I'm like I'm not above and beyond anybody else bad stuff happens to everybody yeah and I just think dealing with it and dealing with people dealing with it and then talking about it all the time it just yeah, I feel like it just makes it just makes you humble. You seem very grateful mm. for yeah, that, that's the, the word I was experience. looking at. Grateful, um, yeah. Not in a hey, Dad, thanks for teaching me these great life lessons, but I think, and this was what I was talking about with sort of the adaptability that struck me with you was that you seem to say, okay, so this has happened, and I've gone through this, and here's what I've taken from mm-hmm. it, and I'm grateful for that. Well, it allows me to relate to people better. Yeah. Because if I'm not going through it and someone's like, I lost my parent or I lost my dog, I had that the other day, or um, I wouldn't know what true sorrow would feel like Mm -hmm. because I'd never experienced anything to that extent. Right. So being allowed to experience that, even though I'd give Mm -hmm. anything to have my father back for more reasons than one, um, it allowed me to relate to people who are going through severe sorrow yeah. to understand and have the correct compassion to show. It's the difference yeah. between being sympathetic and empathetic. 100% right? Right, right, my mind, right, right there. I know we do that way too often, actually. Yeah, yeah, I was just going to um, say the same thing. Yeah, you can go there with yeah. that person, and, and sometimes that's not and a sometimes great thing either. Yeah. Sometimes you cry with them, mm-hmm. but yeah. I, I yeah. hoped that I created create the salon a very safe place for people to feel that way Mm -hmm. i'm not going to judge you for it i think a lot of people think they're going to get judged right definitely like like how they grieve or how they're not grieving or how they react to it or if they have anger or they're not angry like i feel like people feel like they're going to be judged for every emotion that they show yeah and i'm like and in the hair world i'm blessed to be able to be like this is a safe zone and that goes back to the expectations (laughs) jordan that we were talking about those shoulds like you should be past this by now you should be here by now well according to whose timeline right that's right so it's just um some of the things that when we look back at what has helped us get over Mm -hmm. the grief you talked about um i think you talked about writing you talked about writing a letter but i think you had talked about writing a letter too yeah that i i said goodbye to many of people still walking this earth and and that have passed that um i've done it through writing them a letter i've also done um in therapy i've done some role play where i get to talk to the person like they're still sitting in front of me and i get to tell them exactly how i feel um so I think there's, yeah, there's there's lots of different things. I think some people would find that uncomfortable and they wouldn't want to do it, and I think that's okay, too. Definitely. Um, it's like, um, you know, hanging on to stuff that, like, let's say my mom's, I, I only have pictures of her healthy because... Mm-hmm. I don't want to have the memories where she's unhealthy. That's not who she was. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I can't. Yeah the good stuff and I I purge the bad stuff and I do that with a lot of my other like my wedding album is long gone (laughs) as well as the dress I think it all went out in flames but I like what's the point of having it around exactly right yeah um and so I've also that was one of the things in this sort of recent therapy I went through is I let go of some things that I felt like I had to hang on to right but they weren't serving me well there was not a positive yeah and I think also comes with death or loss is rejection and not does that make sense what do you mean okay so so let's say you're going through a breakup and someone breaks up with you and you're not ready Right. That's a sense of rejection. Yes. They've, okay. My loss yeah. is rejected. Yes. They don't want me. There's something not good about me. Right. I'm rejected. Right. With the loss of my father, someone said to me, you're not as upset or as sad as you were when you got broken up with. Right. Why is that? Mm, and I said, because I was rejected. And so that's internalizing that I'm not worth anything. Somebody had right. chosen. To lead this awesomeness. Right. Okay. Yes. Cool. Yes. Okay. But my, <laughs> but my father didn't choose to leave me. So there was no right. rejection sense mm-hmm. in the loss of my father. It's just, I never get to see you again, and that is sad to me. I don't get to hear your voice. Yep. That is sad to me. But I can remember how jolly you were with your rosy red cheeks and how much you loved hunting and all the good stuff that you did. Um, but he never rejected me. He right. didn't reject yeah. my mother. He didn't reject yeah. my family. It yeah. wasn't right. like, I am leaving you and choosing another life, yeah. right? So I Whereas, think there's a difference of yeah. being rejected with loss and actually accepting the circumstance that has come. 
And the different types of loss too, right? So if somebody dies because of suicide versus long illness, I mean, that in itself, crime-related, that is a whole other ball game. Yeah. Which has a different stem of feeling, right? Yeah. Where you can maybe, the blessing for me is I got to compartmental, I can't even say the word right now. Compartmentalize, yeah. Put in boxes. What control I had and what control I didn't have. Right, yeah, yeah, Mm -hmm. Yeah, I Mm -hmm. like that. So um, we're getting close to our time. I just want to, I know, (laughs) I know. Um, Final thoughts, Kel? Um, You know, I just think people need to be good to themselves when they're going through a loss or an ending of some sort. You know, be selfish. It's okay to be selfish. And shut this out because everybody's going to have something to say and it, it, all comes down to you and that's what I would say Jordan feel it Mm -hmm. express it and don't judge it love it yeah perfect Rena it's gonna happen you know it's a part of life learning how to cope with it I think it's an art and I don't think Mm -hmm. we get it all the time and I don't think we need to be hard on ourselves for it yeah yeah Yeah, that's perfect um I have, of course, I have a saying, a quote. Go figure. We should have this segment, Hazel saying. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's brilliant, okay. actually. So why don't we do that? Um, like a show. It is. It's like a show all on its own. You are a show. I, <laughs> thanks. Um, so here, here goes. Grief never ends, but it changes. It's a passage, not a place to stay. Mm-hmm. Grief is not a sign of weakness, nor a lack of faith. It's the price of love. Mm. That's a getter. Got a lot I love. think that's a yeah. great way to let it go. Yep. And I want to thank our guest. Yes, yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you so very much. much. Thank you. Thank my wonderful co-host here, and um, we'll see you next time.